Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Melissa and I help people navigate through their mental health journey. And in this video, I'm going to share with you guys five ways to transition into a whole foods plant-based diet. So originally when I had this idea to make this video, I was overthinking it as far as trying to perfect the tips and all that stuff and trying to go plant-based. But you know what? I bought this guide on how to go plant-based and I found a lot of value in it. And so I think what I'm just gonna do is just read off of it and read off of the five ways that was listed in this book to transition to a whole foods plant-based diet. So without further ado, let's just jump right into it. Five ways to go plant-based. The first way is flexitarian diet. So a flexitarian diet is, it says here, while the diet doesn't eliminate animal products completely, it encourages eating mostly plant-based foods. In other words, there's wiggle room for a burger or grilled chicken if you're in the mood. I feel like that's currently where I am at this moment because eventually in the future, I do wanna go vegan, but going vegan is hard. It's not something that you accomplish overnight. Some people, it takes up to a year to two years to go vegan. Just because the zero to 100 approach doesn't work for you doesn't mean that you shouldn't try to attempt to make healthy changes in your life anyway, right? When I first started, I did meatless Mondays. So I started off with one day a week where I didn't eat meat. I'm not the best cook, but I'm still learning how to cook plant-based foods. And so on meatless Mondays, I would make the vegetarian versions of my favorite dishes. I'm a huge fan of Asian food. I freaking love Asian food. My favorite dishes was japchae. I used to make that all the time. And I used to make that with meat or beef. Yeah, I just kind of make that and just make it without the beef and even then it's still good. Eating meat one day a week already has profound changes and benefits. If not, maybe you eat meat once a day. How that looks for anybody is different. And I feel like when it comes to changing up your diet and lifestyle, you should take on a very slow approach because if you're going to transition into something, you wanna make sure the diet and lifestyle is sustainable for you. And then one question that you might be asking yourself is how do I know whether or not it's sustainable? For me, whether or not I know it's sustainable is based on how it feels. If I feel like I'm being too restrictive, I can't have anything. That's when I have to take a step back and tell myself that, okay, your diet is becoming too restrictive. You need to chill out a little bit. Doesn't mean that I shouldn't quit. Doesn't mean that I shouldn't make any attempts, but instead of focusing on the fact that I can't eat meat, how about I just focus on the fact that I eat more fruits, I eat more vegetables, I eat more whole grain. Even if it's just going one day a week without meat and eventually building up to two days and then three days, literally just listen to yourself. The only person that knows whether or not the diet is right for you is yourself. You have to really really tune into your body, listen to your body and see how you feel. The way that certain foods interact with your body presents itself in very subtle ways, such as anger or irritability. That's something that you have to pay attention to. And if you start feeling good, even if it's making small changes and benefits, keep going. So the next one, the next tip is a vegetarian diet. It says here, a vegetarian approach to plant-based means cutting out all meat, poultry, and fish, but still leaving room for dairy products and eggs. And, and cheese sandwich totally works, just hold the bacon. Yeah, that's one way to do it, going vegetarian, just cutting out everything except for just eggs and dairy. I feel like my diet is kind of a blend or a mixture of all of these diets because right now I'm trying to cut down on chicken, but I still have ice cream with dairy. I still have that, even milk tea every now and then. The one motivation for me in adopting a whole foods plant-based diet is the fact that it's beneficial to my mental health. The reason why I did it is because I didn't want to be on medications anymore. Food is medicine, so let food be that medicine. So instead of using pharmaceutical drugs to treat or manage my mental health and living with bipolar disorder, I can do that with foods instead. Even not cutting out and going 100% vegan, I still find many changes and benefits to my overall mental well-being. And it doesn't have to be perfect. I feel like a lot of people, when they're approaching anything like fitness, diet, nutrition, they take on the mindset of having it be perfect and if you mess up, you quit. Messing up and relapsing, that's all part of the process. Seriously, I went plant-based at the beginning of the year and then when quarantine hit and I had to change up my environment and the people that I was living with who was eating meat all the time, especially Vietnamese food. I grew up eating Vietnamese food. It's hard, but just because you relapse, does that mean that it's the end for you? You just keep going. When you're trying to make changes in your life, it is not easy because the mind is resistant to change. The mind likes being comfortable and the mind likes knowing things and likes having control over things because it helps conserve energy. That's why pushing through that resistance and learning to overcome that resistance with anything, especially with diet, it's going to take some time. Anyway, on to the third way is going vegan. For vegans, going plant-based means abstaining from all animal products, meaning meat, seafood, eggs, dairy, even honey. Luckily, there's 
a large number of plant-based meat and dairy alternatives that make it easier than ever to follow this diet. I think in the beginning, I, I was vegan at some point. Just because you're vegan doesn't mean that you're healthy because there are vegans who are not healthy. If you choose to go that route and take on meat alternatives that's one way to go about it but for me i'm trying to just stay away from processed foods because even though it's fake meat doesn't mean that it's healthy it's loaded in chemicals and all that stuff but that's one way that's definitely one way of going vegan if you've ever tried the impossible burger i think they started selling it at restaurants there's this restaurant called joey's and they had the impossible burger i had it with jonathan we split a burger and it tasted like the exact same thing but anyway beyond burger beyond meat that's like a, a brand that you can get at any local grocery store store there was a point in time where I was making spaghetti with fake meat it's really hard to move away from the taste and texture of consistency of meat if you are trying to transition into a plant-based diet and you still want that familiarity with meat then alternative meat is a great way to go about it and then the fourth way of going plant-based is a Mediterranean diet traditionally followed by people in places like Greece and Italy the Mediterranean diet emphasizes plant-based foods like fruits vegetables beans nuts and olive oil but also includes modest amounts of fish, dairy, and lean protein. Red meat is included only sparingly, so when eating out, opt for salmon and salad, not the steak. If you feel like you're not ready to give up meats or any processed foods entirely, then just take it slow. I don't know if this makes sense. Instead of all of your diet and your source of protein being beef, for example, maybe change that up. Maybe make your sources of protein in your diet from lentils, beans, one day out of the week salmon, one day out of the week chicken, one day out of the week meat. Literally, there's so many ways to adopt a whole foods plant-based diet. Mediterranean, if you feel like you want room for flexibility with making that transition, that's one way to do it. And then last and most certainly, not least, we have the raw food diet. The food list looks similar to that of a vegan diet, but instead of being cooked, most of the foods are eaten raw. There are certain nutrients and enzymes that are depleted or destroyed in the cooking process. You don't need to exclude cooked foods and remain exclusively raw to benefit. Simply include approximately half or more of of your daily calories from raw foods. Kind of like raw fruits and vegetables. You eat it raw, you don't really cook it. So in a way that's kind of going raw. Same thing with salads. But anyway, so those are five ways to go about it. I'm a huge believer in preventive care and taking care of yourself and nutrition is the foundation for your overall health and wellness. And so if you can improve your life with diet and nutrition with just 1% and you compound 1% over the course of the year, that's, I don't know how many percentage that is, but that will go a long way. So that is is it those are five ways where you can transition into a plant-based diet I hope you guys found that valuable with that being said thank you so much for watching I will see you guys in the next video peace much love and many blessings to you